This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Oh boy, oh boy. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Valdemar here with a game from my library, and well, it's probably one of my favorite uh, games of all times, or at least favorite franchise. Well, disbarring the um, the later entries into the series and what's been going on, it's Mass Effect, the sci-fi RPG that started a craze for like over a decade or something like that until the third game came out. And then, well, I'll talk about that over the course of the game, and I don't want to put this down too much because I really want to enjoy myself. I was really considering, like, after doing like Jade Empire, I was trying to consider what to do next for the Bioware games, at least the Bioware ones of old, because I really considered doing Baldur's Gate 1 or Baldur's Gate 2 or Neverwhere Nights um, or MDK, which is one of their weird offshoot games. Um, uh, what, what else was there? I even thought about doing Dragon Age soon, but you know, and then I thought to myself, the Legendary Edition, at least at the time of this recording, has been out for at least a few weeks where they took all the games and retouched them and everything like that. And whatever your feelings on what they did with the retouching, if you don't know anything about that, don't worry about that, but I'm gonna play the original old school. One of the main reasons I wanna do this is because there's one thing that I have that the Legendary Edition does not, unless you know how to like hack the game or patch it. There's probably people who already figured out how to patch the game through like Steam or something online already, is the downloadable content. And not to bring it down the sky one, but the Pinnacle Station. For whatever reason, like either they lost the code or they didn't care to do it or whatever, um, Bioware could not add B uh, P Pinnacle Station to the Mass Effect game. Um, now it's not the biggest loss. Basically all it is is a bunch of combat simulations um, just to like do your ability so you can kind of fight outside of just finding, because there's not really, this game doesn't really have random encounters, if that makes sense. It's all, they're all designed, you fight them on the way. But um, this was a way to just kind of just you know, do all these challenges and kind of just whenever you want to just do the combat parts of it, other than maybe really a part of the game, you could just go to the Pinnacle Station and do it. So yeah, the the Legendary Edition or whatever they call it does not have that. Actually, I don't know if they have the Bringing Down the Sky one as well. They might have been able to uh, salvage that. For whatever reason, Pinnacle Sky is not on that edition, so I've already got a bonus. And I'm playing this on my Xbox 360 Pro. Man, I got this game back in 2007. I remember reading about this game, and Bioware was still like a pretty... You know, how, well, I wouldn't say household name, but it was still a pretty well-known name for like RPGs and stuff like that. And I was really excited. And I was not, I was not, um, uh, I was not um, dis despaired or uh, or saddened by this game. It definitely gave me everything I want. Um, at least I believe so in this game. Now, people argue about the second game and third game, mainly the second game being the best one. And I think that one is a really, really good game as well. Um, I play that one quite often um, whenever I have some free time. But there's just something about this game, the way it's designed, the way it's done, um, is... Okay, so we're going to do... Now nah, we'll level up and... Well, we can set our difficulty later on at some point. Um, yeah, we'll just have autosave potion. Uh, yep, we'll just have the squad ADI do what they want, but I can... If you... Uh, well, we'll go over that when we actually get to the game. I can change this at any time. Um, uh, really, the, the thing I'm going to go over is difficulty. Now, for those of you who play this game are not really... Um, aware of like how shooters work or the, the game is i probably do either normal or casual just so you can uh f play the story because I, I do like the story a lot as well um but you know the shooters aren't rpgers not every rpger can do a shooter you know rpg player i mean um usually normal is the best way to go now uh now to this one um yeah, this game goes up multiple multiple difficulties. Like uh, normal is your standard player what the game was intended. Uh, veteran is the because um, in normal mode you can actually um, it does scale, but if you have a certain uh, level, like at a certain point, um, you can like kind of supersede the bosses and get really really powerful. And the veteran um, they have more uh, uh, bonus, uh, specials and. Um, levels and stuff like that and then hardcore you have to i think you have to beat the game on veteran to unlock hardcore and then i think you have to beat the game on hardcore to unlock insanity mode um now the easiest way to play insanity mode is to actually play the game first and then re and then 
new game plus it and uh and then ch take your file and go from there because then that'll make the the fights relatively easy because even though it's scaled you'll have so many abilities to like even it out that makes it a little bit easier um actually there's one i think the second game is the one you don't want to do that with because of how like how insane it goes or whatever um but uh, for now, for for this uh, for this playthrough, I'm not. I've actually beaten this game on insanity mode. You actually have to to get max achievements or whatever. Um, though the, the the bad thing about doing insanity is that if I choose insanity, I pretty much have to play one class because it's the easiest class to game in the play, and I don't really want to go into too much detail. But I've played this game so many times that I'm aware of the difficulty of it, so I'm going to leave it on veteran just to kind of give me a keep me a keep me aware of what I'm doing without like going into hardcore or insanity mode. I just have to be aware of bosses and stuff like that because on normal mode you're most likely going to just steamroll a lot of the, the bosses at one point. So although comparably in difficulty can, a lot of people consider this game to be the hardest out of the three because of it having more RPG mechanics than anything. So um, uh, Oh, whoops. Sorry. All I did was a uh, I can just set back to veteran. Sorry. Mm -hmm. right. Anyway, save that. Right. Um, the game would have asked me to set this up before starting anyway. Um, I'm gonna make this a long episode because I really kind of want to just get the set and ready to go and um, and uh, you know just kind of go through everything. Yeah, I turned off the vibration because I hate vibration on my controllers. I I think it's a worthless feature to add to try and add realism to the game uh, to games by like making your controller shake. I always found it annoying. And I had to turn it off because a lot of the times my controllers would wear out faster because the, you know, on this controller I'm using, if I turn the vibration on, you would hear the controller rattling in the motor, like, D -d 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 -d, or something like that. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to try to keep this controller around as long as I can before I have to buy another one, which I technically need to buy another one. This thing has been worn out for quite a few, quite a few years. So, um, I'll have to talk about the achievements later. One, I can show you all of them, but I'd be spoiling things for the people, although most people probably played mass effect before i hope if you haven't i would stop right now and go play this game this is awesome go find the original one go go and see and find matt the first mass effect or find the original collection before the legendary edition because uh or find some people who hack the game so they can so you can get pinnacle station all that other stuff because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna support a, a half-assed job that they did in the legendary edition from what i from what i've heard i mean i could be wrong i'm not gonna buy it so because i have this and i'll find ways around not buying that so um, anyway, let's start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified Ooh, we have voice acting. Oh, sorry. Um, because of the delay, I have like a two to three second delay on hearing things, so I might accidentally talk over people, so I apologize. Alliance Military Personal Database in 7. Hmm. Secret day. Let's find out what the secrets are. Establishing secure yes, this... connection. Secure connection confirmed. This game does have voice acting, so obviously, luckily, I won't have to strain my voice throughout half the game. Doing everyone's voices, not that, you know, everyone would be like, yay! Um, now, if you're playing the, uh, uh, for what I understand, canon-wise and everything like that, uh, this this picture that we have right here is we play a man named John Shepard. That's the canon name, from what I understand. Um, he is named after... He's supposed to be named after a famous astronaut. It's either, like, one of the first people in... Maybe not one of the first people in space... But like a major, like um, a major ast astronaut, um, like, like that was named. That like his name is Shepard. I'd have to look it up. All over the course of the game, I'll re remember some of the little details about the game. And John is just an. I don't think his name was John Shepard. I think it was like something Shepard, and just they use John because that's like just a generic name or whatever. Uh, but we're creating our own Shepard in this case. Now, probably if I was just playing the game straight, and just want to get to it, we could stick with Shepard, and that'd be fine. Um, and Shepard in this game is voiced by Mark Mir, I believe. Uh, but, uh, well, we can, the one thing about this game is that I've already done the, I've already played this game multiple times, obviously. So I could ch choose an existing career and replay the game from basically new game plus where I take all my levels and just stack them onto a new character. So if, if you're playing like easy or normal mode, you'll basically go through the game a lot faster and just like steamroll through everything. Um, or if you're trying to play a harder difficulty, take your stats and then uh, to put them to veteran, hardcore, or insanity, which is probably the easiest way to do insanity because the game's pretty hard if you start insanity like as 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 a brand new character, 
you know, that it's a little bit tougher. Uh, we're going to do a new ID for this one, even though I have like a million characters or files or whatever. Now, in this game, one of the cool things is you can choose between um, ma uh, male shepherd or female shepherd. Um, the difference really in the game is, well, over the over the two or three games is love interests and obviously how they refer to Shepard. Although the one way they get around um, not having to uh, change, uh, not have to do the first name is they just call you Shepard, which is pretty cool. And uh, luckily, or gl uh, greatly enough, the fem uh, female Shepard is voiced by our, our lovely lady of Bioware, has voiced many voices before, Jennifer Hale, who did like Basila and other such characters. Ah, oh, my love, it it's great to, it was great to hear you once again. However, we're going to be doing <laughs> male shepherd. Sorry, I just... I, I would normally do... Actually, maybe I should do... A, no, 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 no. We're going to stick with our original plot. The the thing I want to do. But if I was going to play... Well, actually, I've played both. Um, most people tend to say Jennifer does a bit better... Uh, is a bit better at th voicing her lines than Mark is. But I think that's a bit unfair. I think people just like playing as female shepherd overall. Um, and yeah, red-haired... Uh, Shepard is, uh, is considered uh, her uh, canonical form or whatever, but most people, um, from what I understand, uh, male Shepard is the canonical like character, so we'll customize uh, Shepard. I think I've already got a Voldemort um, character, but I'm doing this from scratch, obviously, so yeah, we're just going to call ourselves our name right here, so yeah, I, I almost thought about playing as through Fem Shep. Uh, that's the short version of her mail ship, Please but uh, now we're going to... Oops, sorry. Alright, since there's no subtitles, I have to guess when she's going to talk or not, so... Oh, what's this red stuff? No! Morning. No! Data! Data. No! Detected. My shepherd has been corrupted! Please uh, that's further, that's close to the truth. Reconstruct, huh? What do you mean? This, uh, th by the way, this doesn't. I don't think this happens if you choose. Oops, sorry. This doesn't happen if you choose a uh, quick start Shep. It just goes to. I think quick start Shep is a spacer um, hero. I think it's been a while since I've done uh, what canonical this Shepherd is, but the. Um, now what this is is pre-service history. Now what this does in the first game is this adds an extra couple a couple lines of dialogue when discussing your past, as well as a, a mission that's different between the three uh, three pre-service histories. It even is mentioned in the second and third game. Although in the second and third game, they're not as big of a deal. It's only it's only in the first game that it's really kind of even then it's not really that big of a deal. If that makes sense, it's just because you know how many variables they would have to be if you made so many extra dollars based off like which of these you choose um there's also a minor um stat difference uh, when you choose one of these but let's read these first so spacer both of your parents were in alliance military your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting never staying in one location for more than a few years following in your parents footsteps you enlisted at the age of 18 colonist you were born and raised in mindor or mindwar a small border colony in Attican. Uh, traverse when you were 16 slavers raided Mindwar, slaughtering your family and friends you were saved by a pa passing alliance patrol you enlisted with the military a few years later or earthborn you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolis covering earth you escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting in the alliance military when you turned 18. now if you choose the spacer uh, uh, pre-service history you actually get a small bonus to um, in this game called Paragon, which we'll get to that. Uh, for those who don't know, Paragon is a, a specific um, attitude that Shepard has. And uh, we'll go over that later. But you get a bonus to uh, Paragon points if you choose Spacer. I think you might also get some uh, slight Paragon points right at the beginning. Colonist is neutral. You get no benefits from that at all. And Earthborn, you start as... Or uh, you get Renegade points uh, or uh, uh, at the beginning of the game as well. Um, for this playthrough, we're going to do Earthborn. Confirm and then here's another... Uh, sorry. Um, here's another variation here. Um, uh, this is also the same thing. Um, I believe you also get some um, variances. I'll have to double check on that one as well. But these are how, like, what 
uh, what made you who you are and why you're a hero and stuff like that. And there's a same thing with the pre-service history. There's a few line of dialogue, few scenes or a few lines of dialogue in the game that indicate that this what this is. Not very many though, if I recall correctly. And there is no mission based off of uh, this specific stat. This is more of a just a um, story telling, if I remember correctly. Um, since I haven't played, it's been a while since I've actually played Mass Effect 1. It's been like over a year, so I might be a little r r uh, rusty on some details, but we'll quickly remember those as we play the game. Anyway, Soul Survivor. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you're alone. You alone are left to tell the tale. Ugh. Um, early in your uh, war hero, early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risk your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism earn you medals and recognition for the Alliance fleet. And finally, ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule: get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. You've been, uh, or uh, your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes you fel your fellow soldiers wary of you. But when fa uh, failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Um, in this one, if you choose military hero, you get a paragon bump. Um, if you choose ruthless, you get a, a renegade bump. Soul survivor is neutral in this case. Um, we're gonna go with uh, ruthless in this Confirmed choice. Ah, now here's the class system in the game. Sorry, talking over the lovely lady again. Um, I don't know who the voice actor for the lady is. Uh, this dictates how the game is going to play. Now, if you're playing on insanity mode or any of the hard, super hard difficulties outside of what I'm playing, choose soldier. That is the easiest class to play in the game. Straightforward, and your AI can, AI companions, uh, spoilers are very good companions, they'll take care of the... Well, they won't take care of all the slack on the hard difficulties. You kind of have to control them a bit more to get what you need done. But they'll cover whatever's left. Because Soldier is the most durable class, especially if you're not very good at these games. There's so many abilities that they have that'll survive that encounter. So if you're doing Insanity, choose Soldier. Don't choose anyone else. Now, you're probably saying, well, probably you could beat it with other classes. Oh, yeah, you probably could. It's just a lot harder. You have to, like, really pay attention to, like, your abilities and everything like that. Uh, but anyway, let's go over them first, just to give you an idea. Soldiers are combat specialists, ideal for the front lines of a firefight. Soldiers get improved health, can train in the use of all weapon types, start with the ability to use medium armor, and can specialize in heavy armor. So yeah, that's why you can, you're can you more of a tank in this form, because you wear heavy armor, you get high HP, and you can choose whatever weapon you want to utilize over the course of the game. So you get a, a choices, but you can't use... You can't use any cool abilities or anything like that, which will go, which is where we go to the next uh, class, the engineer. Engineers are tech specialists using the hologram, holographic omni tool. They can decrypt security systems, repair or modify technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons or shields, and heal their squad. Engineers can only use light armor and can receive, only receive weapon trainings with pistols. Yeah, you get a, if you choose the engineer, you get a major restriction when it comes to weapons. You can only choose the pistol, which there's some cool abilities with pistols. So it's not like the worst weapon. Obviously, pistols are weak, are weak comparison to like the assault rifle. But uh, your big thing as an engineer is you can um, your Omni tool is lets you gives you special abilities. Um, you're really useful against like machines and stuff like that. Now, before um, obviously, I'm not I'm not really gonna spoil the game until we play it. But let's just say in the very first game, in, uh, the engineer outside of the soldier, obviously, the engineer is probably the most useful class in this game because of the enemies you face in the game. Let's just say that. Um, outside of the first game though, the engineer is still useful to a point, but it's not as, I wouldn't say it's OP, but there's a lot of times where you're, where you, the engineer like to, is a lot more efficient than, uh, than almost the soldier, depending on how you play. Um, we'll get to that if we, when we, um, later. Uh, and finally the, oh, by the way, these, these three top options, these are the pure classes. We'll get to the, why that's called that afterwards so this is the adept adepts are biotic specialists through though through through upgradable implants like you use biotic powers to lift or throw objects shield the squad or disa uh, disable or destroy enemies adepts can only use light armor can only receive weapons trains through pistols kind of sucks as well but they're basically it's all they're almost like the magic users of the game where they use their adepts but they can basically use the force almost really they get some really cool abilities over the course of the game um this is another kind of fun class to play as. 
Now, these last three are what we call mixed classes. What they do is they take um, some of the from the three pure classes and kind of mix and mash them. If you're playing harder difficulties, it's better to play. If you don't want to play soldier, it's better to play the pure classes because of what they can give you um, in the long run, uh, as opposed to the mixed classes. But if you're playing easy, normal, or even veteran, you know, play whatever you want. But I, I've noticed like the the mixed classes tend to be a well a mixed bag. You know, sometimes you get what you want, but you're usually not. You're almost getting a jack of all trades situation here, where you can do kind of a lot of a couple of cool things, but you never get the a pure abilities that the pure classes do. I don't think I've ever actually. Well, I'm trying to think if I've ever actually bleed. I've played this these games so many times, but I don't think I've ever had a pure run where I've played as a as a as a, as a mixed uh, uh, mixed class. I always choose like the pure classes here. But anyway, the Infiltrator. Infiltrators combine combat and tech abilities to specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use Omni tools, focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can also use pistols or sniper rifles and medium armor. Yeah, the Infiltrator is kind of your sniper rifle specialist, even though you can use pistols. Um, and yeah, they get some abilities that the Engineer doesn't, kind of some mixed abilities, but the Engineer gets some like pure abilities outside the Infiltrator, so it, you know, and okay, the infiltrator is basically the soldier and engineer class kind of like mixed together. Um, but if you're going to use sniper rifles, you could just choose like a soldier and use the sniper rifles. So, uh, like I said, it, it it's got some cool abilities. But uh, well, anyway, the sentinel the sentinel is basically a mix between the engineer and the adept. Sentinels combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically, they use biotic abilities and advanced healing skills to defend allies, though they can also disrupt opponents with bi biotic or tech attacks. They are more efficient at tech and biotics than other classes, but at the expense of combat. Sentinels can only use light armor and receive no advanced weapon training. So that means they can use pis they can use weapons, but they never get like any super special abilities with guns. Like guns have a special ability if you level them up to a certain point, they can do cool things. Same with all the weapons. But you'll never be able to do that with the Sentinel, for example. So, because you're a mix between the Engineer and Adept. And then finally, the Vanguard. Um, this one could be a really fun class, actually. Uh, but it's really hard to pull off in the harder difficulties. Um, uh, this one's a Soldier and Adept mix. Uh, but anyway, Vanguards are biotic warriors and combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range. They use pistols and shotguns and can specialize in medium armor. The Vanguard gets a really cool ability where... I don't think the adept gets it uh, uh, either, but anyway, the vanguard basically allows you to like charge into combat with a biotic shield to just like smash into people, and then you go shotgun on them. But um, I mean, the cool thing about it is it gives you a shield when you do that. But the thing is, if on the harder difficulties, unless you're beefed up and ready to go, you'll get like just like gang banged basically, and ugh, it can on the harder difficulties it's really hard to play vanguard. You almost play vanguard if you just want to have fun. With close quarters combat, like, like I said, easy, normal, maybe veteran. Um, I think the first time I played the game, I actually did play Vanguard. I think that's the class I chose first. When I first popped in the disc or whatever. Um, I, I do like the Sentinel class, but yeah, the ability to not like any bonuses with, with guns. Because guns you can kind of still use while well, your abilities are having cooldown. Um, so it's kind of a tough choice, like completely removing um, the ability. Because I like being kind of like jack of all trades but for this version we're going to play the adept um this is the adept shop all right and uh because i've beaten the game uh, or now if you never played this game before you can ignore this section right here um when you beat the game and you've gotten an achievement for using certain class abilities over the course of the game this this game is a really cool like feature that never came back again and no other games I've ever brought back since is that it's got a reward for actually getting achievements in the game. In most games, if you get achievements, it's just like kind of an in-game thing or it's just kind of like a profile thing where it's like, oh, you maxed out the game, cool, whatever. In this game, you actually get bonuses for doing that, which I don't get why no other games have ever done this ever again. It's It's been ignored. Like, why not? You know? It gives great replay value, and you can like customize your character like multiple ways by beating the game. Like, but yeah, this one's from like using killing people with shotguns so many times. Same thing with all the weapons. Um, actually, basically, it's with all these. It's for using um, the ability so many times throughout the game. I believe either that it's maxing out the stats. It's been forever since I've done it. But yeah, you get to actually get to slightly customize your character. So 
Um, so, for example, if I want to have my... Normally, I don't get pistols, but because I've already beaten the game, I get to actually... I could choose assault rifles if I really wanted to. Or I could give myself a... I could give myself a hacking ability. Um, really the most... Uh, I'm trying to remember the most useful one in the game. I think it was electronics or whatever. Um, or, yeah, first aid of medicine helps with uh, healing and stuff like that. Um, but for combat purposes, I am going to... Probably the most useful weapon in the game is the assault rifle. Confirm um, facial identification. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and change it. Unfortunately, there isn't a super major, like, um, animation system, which is fine. In later games, I think, or even in, like, Dragon Age, they were able to get this down a bit more. So we're just going to go over a quick, um, uh, we're not going to take too long on this. Yeah, you can see, like, we only have so many options for our character. Um, I just don't want, I don't want to take too long on this because it's not that important. And yeah, you can do, like, different skin tones and stuff like that, so you can make Shepard however you want. Um, and then complexion makes it, like, however... Like, uh, I believe it's supposed to be withered slash old is what you're supposed to be. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's a cool scar. Do we want the cheek or do we want over the eye? Over the eye is always a cool one. I mean, I don't know if I'd actually want a scar in real life, but uh, I don't know if you can tell. Oh, yeah, I can move my head as well and all that. As you can see, like, what scars I can get. Oh, man, that's... So there's some cool ones. Yeah, the big line right there. I think I'm going to go with the, line, the one over the eye. I think that's a cool one. Um, yeah, scars are cool. And yeah, thickness of the neck. Some of the stuff isn't that big of a deal. Um, I actually do want to... Maybe I should make myself... Maybe it makes myself extra thick. Yeah. Um, I think make ourselves like... Oh yeah, I would make myself a... Make, make myself a hard ass like that. Let's, let's just turn up... Let's just turn up the... Turn up the stats, man. Turn up the jam. Actually, what was Gaunt do? Oh, yeah, that makes uh, my ch ch cheeks. We can make ourselves a very thick thick boy. Yeah, big ears. Make us space out a bit. <laughs> We're almost making ourselves, like, kind of goofy at this point. Um, not as bad as some other games where you can, like, really make yourself, like, look super silly, especially with, like, detailed weapon system or um, design. Let's see. What type of eyes do I want? And obviously, you can make it... Um, I kind of... What, what eyes did I have before this one? That was kind of good. I kind of like that. I'm actually designing this guy like differently than what I normally would. I tend to, I have a bad habit of like designing characters and like almost the same way, like every time I play a game for whatever reason, um, you get into certain, like you say, Oh, I'm going to, well, when I first played the game and so many times I, I didn't, but when you get older, you almost start doing the same playthrough all over and over again. Um, for whatever reason, I guess just cause you're used to it. So, um, and make his eyes like super. Oh man, look at that! <laughs> we're like I said, we're not as silly as we could be, but I think death just uh, pushes. Yeah, it either pushes your eyes really far back or really far forward. So uh, yeah, we'll just yeah, we'll just max out. Let's see, what do we? I might go for red. Although that won't be that won't be a point like later on, really, when you think about it. Uh, yeah, we'll get, well, not red, but you know what I mean, like, uh, yeah, that works. Our jaw, yeah, just make ourselves, like, the big, uh, the big job man. Oh, we're manly men. Yeah, look at that width. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hot. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't want to spend too long on this. Uh, let's see. Lips for kissing? For kissing? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, this is another case where it's just like you can do a guy who already has a permanent frown on his face. Yeah, I think that's the same one where your mouth is either really far in or really far back. Yeah, and yeah, make your mouth look really big. Big lips, big lips, big height. Man, we got a big, got a big chin or whatever. Man, yeah, you're gonna stick with this for the rest of the <coughs> rest of this game, folks. So. What type of nose do I want to have? Can I have a big, big bridge, maybe? Eh, that one isn't bad either. I was kind of trying to go with like big, like big nose, big nostrils, that type of thing. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, you know, stick the nose out and everything. Guy, look. Not the silliest look. All right. Okay, what do we want? Yeah, too bad you don't really get a chance to give Shepard a big beard. I know why, though. He's military, so... And you're not supposed to have, like, big facial... Like, facial hair. Um, because it could be a, it could be an issue. Um, it's not bad. I kind of like the Chester Arthur there. Yeah, we'll go with that. Brow. Um, oh, yeah, you can see that the scar, like, cuts out the bit of the eye... Or eyebrows there. Uh, yeah, it makes it look sad if I get those eyebrows. Yeah, big bushy eyebrows. Right, what do we, actually, do we want to give him hair or do we make it bald? Or shaved? Yeah, you can't really give him much of a hair either. Same thing, like, uh, even the femme chef doesn't get much in the way of hair. Uh, so, could just give him the buzz cut. Make him a proper military man. Maybe let his hair grow out a little bit. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, what type of hair do we want to give him? Uh, could go with red. Make him a ginger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> then make him have different colored facial hair just because he's weird like that. Like he dyes his hair. I, that could work actually. He actually dyes his hair red, but he keeps his but his original hair is black. There you go. Okay, cool. Awesome. Profile reconstruction we look complete. We look ready for battle. And finally, 30 minutes in, we finally get to the game. Yay! Yeah, sorry about taking so long on that, so. Oh, well. That's why I'm making this now. Oh, yeah, now we can. Now I can choose our level, but we've already done that, so we're good to go. And let's begin the game, shall we? Like, what have we what have we done to get to this point? What is our great mission that uh, the Mass Effect world has brought upon us? Well... What about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets, learned to look out for himself. He got most of his unit killed on Torfin. He gets the job done, no matter what the cost. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2488, uh, explorers on the Mars discovered the remains of an ancient space or civilization. In the decades that followed, some serious artifacts revealed started with new technologies and England traveling to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it... Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. 
You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. <laughs> Karth of Nassi, is that you? Yeah, the guy who voices Kaiden is the same guy who voiced Karth of Nassi. Uh, I think he also voiced... Uh, the guy... I keep forgetting his name. The guy who voices Karth... Or... And Kaiden, in this case, the guy who's Kaiden, he's always like a lot of random, I think he's like European, if I remember correctly, but or maybe even Canadian, but he's always like a lot of random characters over the years. He did a lot of Bioware work for the longest time. The sad thing is he tends to play the most vanilla characters, like he voices the vanilla characters of the games that have, aren't as interesting as everyone else, but, uh, and if you haven't noticed already, Joker is voiced by the comedic uh, stylings of Seth Green, for those who aren't aware, he does uh, like Robot Chicken and other such things, so... I was, I was surprised to hear that too I was not fully aware of like his career but uh, I thought it was a nice different voice to hear from what you usually hear in the voice acting era now in like typical uh, now this is obviously different from Bioware's old system like in Old Republic and, uh, and stuff like that where they just had you had lines of text to choose from now the benefit of that was you could do so much different dialogue choices and nuances because the main character in that game didn't talk in this game, we talk, so we have to kind of... Bioware knew that they kind of had to, like, streamline certain responses in order to... Because otherwise, if you had them do, like, what we did in the old days of Star Wars, or the Bioware engine, where you had, like, all these different choices, like, in Dragon Age has that, too, which is almost why I wanted to do that before this. But anyway, um, you had to streamline it. Otherwise, you'd, like, be pe doing, like, so many different extra lines of dialogue and all this other stuff, it'd be crazy expensive and all that so you have to like stream so unfortunately now we've only got curt answers which we respond to um but anyway you can um roughly in this game um if you choose anything on the left side here that's extra information like if you're curious about like info about a mission or whatever you always want to do stuff on the left side sometimes it'll end a conversation but most times it won't it'll be what do you want to know about the mission right side here is a conversation like it sends the conversation to the next step of the game um top answers are usually positive to affirmative um uh, like you either agree with someone or you're ending the conversation in a good to neutral manner um middle is usually neutral for the most part like you're not being uh, like super nice or super mean or whatever you want to call it you're kind of just you know going you're just kind of going through the you know let's just cut to the chase type of thing and then the bottom one is your more aggressive, negative um, options. Uh, you know, you're usually either mean or aggressive with people and stuff like that. Um, and that'll affect how you're, you know, how you kind of view your character in the course of the game. So we're going to be, since we're Earthborn and Ruthless, we're going to be a hard ass. That's enough. Your soldiers, act like it. Sorry, Commander. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? When he did uh, talk about like uh, the the guest that you had, and uh, he the guest probably heard it as well. So, uh, yeah, is he upset? I heard you made him mad. Great, you pissed the captain off, and now I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. And yes, there is a uh, if you choose reg uh, aggressive responses quite regularly, you'll get. Uh, what's called renegade points and now we can actually move around the game Woo! now you're probably wondering yourself why does this game look a little grainy and and like see that like movement around like where we're moving kind of that motion blur well i turned that on actually um this game like i don't think they ever brought this back after the first game um for a cinematic experience the game added a thing called uh, film grain so it kind of makes you like you're watching a movie which i kind of appreciate now not everyone's into that thing so you can choose to turn it off luckily same with motion blur here now for those who aren't a fan of that um uh, well i don't know what to tell you that's how i like playing the game so sorry um and we can also get an options menu and stuff like that um i don't want to get too much in the codex right now because you know we could this is it's a bioware game there's so much like dialogue and extra stuff you can learn about the game that 
we'd probably do a whole episode of just the codex, you know, that type of thing. And here's our uh, character stats here. Uh, we are Voldemort Shepard, Adept, and Paragon of Renegade points. Paragon of Renegade in this game, uh, obviously Paragon, as you can tell, Paragon is more your Paragon of Virtue or Human. You know, you try to do for the best of the best, you try to be diplomatic and, and calm to your peers and try to get the situation out of the line that'll benefit both parties, that type of thing. Renegade is more ruthless and aggressive. Now that changes over the course of the Mass Effect series. Paragon kind of goes from being just kind of like a little bit like you're still you're still like a military person that tends to not go for shoot first, ask questions later type of mentality. But later on, it almost comes Paragon is almost like superhero almost levels of Paragon or, or helpful. At least that's what it seems like to me. Um, while Ruth, while Renegade is different in the first game, Renegade is like. You're almost murderous and ruthless, and like super murderous and ruthless in this game. Like, and that gets toned down later on the series in the second and third game. You're still, I mean, you still kill people and all this other stuff, but I don't know. Just in this game, it's almost like they still had the mentality of of Star Wars or Baldur's Gate or whatever when it came to like ruthless. Like you're more like almost lawful evil in this case in this game. Later on, they toned it down a little bit, which I don't know how I feel about that. I guess it made sense because you're supposed to be a regular person who just maybe sometimes goes over the edge every once in a while but uh anyway um if you're first playing this game and you want to max out your character stats to the to the purest point avoid uh putting any points in charm and intimidation um the thing about this game is uh there's actually a stat for your renegade and paragon influence in the game uh, in later course of the series uh that you, there's no like straight up there's a stat for it but it's not one you can affect through levels because they this game changes quite drastically from the second and third game. It gets more streamlined, which I kind of find sad. But anyway, charm is for those who want to add, who want to charm people, and this helps uh, through the Paragon option. Now, obviously, if you're playing the game for the first time, obviously you could do whatever you want, but I really suggest not putting points into these because, uh, interesting enough, over the course of the game, if you constantly choose certain, um, like if you choose Paragon the whole time, this stat will go up naturally. You won't have to, as long as you're consistent with your choices, you won't have to put a point into this thing. Uh, same with Intimidate. Uh, you will get that if you keep choosing Renegade slash, uh, slash Ruthless options. You'll eventually just get points into it overall. Now the bad thing about doing that the first time uh, if you play the game is you might miss out on certain choices or options because you didn't have like enough Intimidate at that point of the game. Um, but I like this game enough that I would def I've done a few runs where I've done I didn't put any points in them and then just played the second time through and kept that file uh, for transfer over to the second game. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll read it what what it does. Charm opens conversation, decreases cost of items in store. Charm options and conversations will be grayed out if you do not have a high enough skill. New skill ranks will unlock when you become a Spectre as you earn Paragon points. Um, I think you automatically get a point either. I think in both as soon as you become. Uh, unfortunately, the game spoils a bit of the plot already, so maybe I shouldn't have said anything or read it. But this spoils a bit of the plot by reading this. Uh, when, a, when a certain point in the game occurs, you'll get a point in these automatically for free anyway. So, um, anyway, uh, Intimidate opens Intimidate options, increases credits gained when selling items. Um, these become null and void in later games. Um, intimidate options will, let's see, yeah, it doesn't go into much detail. But, um, I guess I shouldn't worry about this screen yet because we're not actually in combat. When we actually get to combat or a combat situation, I'll go over the level screen then. And then we could go into the codex and journal, which talks about like the missions and what's going on currently. Yeah, we're Commander Shepard, Executive Officer on the SSV Normandy. We got no assignments. Now the codex, the cool, actually I thought it did not, uh, oh, maybe I have to actually view it, at, check it as viewed. Go to Captain Anderson in his comm room, just in case you didn't hear the current conversation. Now the cool thing about the codex, is it's actually well i think it's all in the primary on the secondary you can just read it on the primary it's all voiced by a, a very nice voice uh, voiceover um um actor but i don't i don't remember his voice off the top of my head but he vo reads all this but we'll go over that later um i'm not going to do it right now because obviously i, I want to get to the plot at some point so anyway the cap is waiting for you in the com room commander hmm yeah, well, I guess we can. I, I don't think. I, I think they don't have too much extra. Yeah, they don't have for you in the too much comment. extra. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. Hmm. I guess not. Uh, there's also keep a whole lookout for like random bits of info. There's like things you can randomly click on for like little bits of extra stuff to your codex. Um, also, based on certain missions you do. And we're 
are getting dragged right along with him. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. Talk about the Spectre. Not a lot of people don't seem to be fans of the Spectre. Oh, I, I pulled that gun. Not that you can do anything in here anyway. I mean, you can shoot people, but won't do anything. It's not like other, like certain game franchises where you can um, um, actually kill characters and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I, I accidentally, pre whoops, I keep pressing the, I keep forgetting that there's the, the dash is A in this game, <laughs> not uh, not the shoulder button. So. I grew up on Eve Prime Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Yeah, I like the exposition. I like it when exposition is not is given to like kind of in the background and not forced. Well, I mean, this game has exposition, but you know what I mean. Um, where people kind of talk about it, maybe people don't know any better. Because usually you as the character are supposed to know like what's going on. Anyway, uh, before we might not even get to the beginning mission at this rate, but we'll see what happens. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Yep, sure am. I wonder if we're going to see the, the uh, technical glitch in this. I think it's still there, as far as I recall, but I uh, heard you argue. Sounds like you don't trust Arturian Guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. But yeah, you can see, like I said before, the, I mean, sometimes you'll go to a different, um, if the, if the, if the, if the two dollars are just the middle options, then either one will get you to the next, uh, the next dialogue tree. But usually, like I said, usually the left one gives you more answers than the right does usually. And like I said, right is usually, um, a conversation or whatever. So yeah, see, um, goodbye and all this. Other, but anyway, what do you mean? You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? All we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system. Why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Now you're probably wondering why they're speaking about a Turian like this, like this alien creature or whatever like this. Well, we'll learn about that over the course of the game. So anyway, let's uh, keep asking questions. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. Mm. Means there's something more to this mission than meets the eye. Transformers! Um, but yeah, if you're like one of those people who don't really care about the expanding the lore of the story, always go with the right answers for, uh, first, because they'll get you basically the next side of the job. For me, I always like learning everything, at least in the, even though I've known these, like what's going on in this game, so you're wrong. A full crew makes sense. We need the extra hands in case anything goes wrong, and the Spectre is just here as an observer. Well, maybe you're right, Commander, but I just can't shake this feeling that we're out here on false pretenses. Let me see if I could uh, get any different. What do you know about the stealth? I just know the Normandy's. Plus, there's not. Okay, see, we can. It's pretty obvious um, the shakedown run. If you can press the X button or whatever game you're playing on to uh, skip the conversation if you've heard it before or whatever. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. True, not uh, me either. I'm ruthless, you know. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. Oh, did you see that little thing with his eyes? Uh, it, it's not a very good representation, but well, maybe another question we'll get to it. So, uh, if you want to know about Captain Anderson, the guy he's talking about, there's actually a book based off his earlier stories, which I'll I don't remember the name of the book off the top of my head. I'll, I'll remember in a later episode. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. First contact war. What was that? Uh, well, I know, but uh... Nihilus is no ordinary Turian. 
You've got that right, Commander. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. He's expecting some action. Dun -na -na -na. You don't trust He's expecting Nihilus. some no, action in from general, us. Runs in my, family. my grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus oh, looks okay, like he's repeating. expecting some heavy um, action. I don't like it. So this, this, the Spectres, they seem to be not, not renegade, or not a, not a, they operate outside the law or something like that? What kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of officer or military person do you want that could just do anything they want <laughs> uh, I mean, well, what could you do with that such power anyway just do your job dude info's on a need to know basis Presley just follow the orders you're given understood commander and not all options if you're aggressive with them will give um, renegade points not all the time sometimes it's just, you're just being aggressive um, but anyway uh, so let's uh, I at least want to see the captain before we call it up so you should here we go check out the galaxy map. Hmm. I see. I'm not allowed to. Well, let's talk to Captain Jenkins and uh, who's this, Dr. Chalk was? You were talking about the Turian? What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Hmm, Jenkins, huh? I think you look better in red. I don't know why. I, I just think you'd be better in a red shirt, you know? Uh, Dr. Wright, Rax, Jenkins, part of the job, Doc. Marines are meant to fight. You just fix us up when we're done. I know how things work, Commander. I've seen my share of combat, but it's foolish to go looking for trouble. You could both take a lesson from the captain. He's not afraid of combat, but he knows the value of restraint, too. Sorry, Doc, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before. Not one with a Spectre on board. Yeah, everyone's talking about the Spectre. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. Man, this guy's like itching to like end a fight. You sound like a young rookie ready to, ready to uh, you know, clench your teeth into some, some enemies of some sort, whoever they are in this world. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. At any cost, huh? I guess sometimes you need a, someone like that. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those CSEC grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. Well, we are playing a game, so... Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. What you did on Torfin, that's what they're looking for. Success at any cost, ruthless efficiency, show no mercy. Um, yeah, as you can see, that there are some of those decisions about um, my 
profile as well as my history has been bring up being brought up but mainly it gets brought up at the beginning here and then like uh, sprinkled at other points but not too much though so i could do <laughs> i'm not a monster well too bad i could do that sounds like my kind of job this is all just wild speculation the Spectres aren't interested in recruiting humans, no matter how capable. Yeah, they'll never, they'll never recruit a human, ever. That's not why we're talking about it or anything. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But... When I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Hmm, sounds like you're a fire boy who uh, wants to get out into the real world. I can, I can understand that. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. And calm, calm, uh, calm your tits, boy. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on Torfin. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Man, no one... Your name is Jenkins. I don't think you're going to be a hero. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not going to screw this up. Will you? The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye. Anyway, yeah, we get reggae poised for being a dick to Jenkins. So, very nice. <laughs> uh, being a jerk. I don't think we can go down the ship yet, can we? Nope. We have Because we have to talk to the captain. Okay, we're, we're hitting that mark. I think we'll be able to get to the captain and get to the point of the story before we call it up, so... Boy, sorry about uh, taking so long to get here. I was just so excited to play it. I didn't... I want to explore everything and talk about the game, so... There's Nihilus the Turian. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. Uh, why would a Spectre want to talk to me? The hero of Torfon! Or whatever, so. Uh, where's Captain Harrison? The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I think uh, I've been told by Jenkins it is a par beautiful, I guess. If you have a fuel, I wouldn't know. So what? I'm a marine, not some tourist on vacation. It's more than just a tourist destination, isn't it, Shepard? Eden Prime is a symbol of your people. A perfect little world on the edges of your territory. Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? <laughs> Did you see some of the uh, technical glitches where his head kept swapping back and forth? And <laughs> there's a lot of that in this game, unfortunately. And uh, I don't think they ever fit. There's a lot of bugs in this game they never officially fixed. But most of the bugs are just like cosmetic. Uh, very few bugs are like actually game breaking or anything like that. So, oh well. And I don't even think they fixed on the PC or later versions. Maybe in the Legendary Edition. But like I said, I'm not going to get that. So I don't know. Uh, why are you asking? What's your point? <laughs> yeah, is that a threat? Turian. Are you trying to scare me, Spectre? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Hey, it's Keith David! Yay! Yeah, Keith David voices uh, Captain Anderson. One of the sexiest voices out there, next to, like, uh, uh, James Earl Jones or... Uh, Oh, what was the other? There was another voice that was like super deep and commanding. It was like, oh man, Keith David. I remember from the days of voicing, um, oh, what was the name of the head gargoyle on the Gargoyles Disney show? I don't remember. It's been forever since I saw that. But yeah, I think that's the first time I heard Keith David talk. But uh, man, guy's got a voice. Anyway, I knew it. What's going on? That's obvious. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Uh, why, uh, yeah, why the secrecy? What are we picking up? You should have told me. I don't like being kept in the dark, Captain. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. 
I like that we're kind of a hypocrite with our answers there because we just told Presley about need to know information and that's not it's above his pay or it's below above his pay grade or something like that. Yet yeah, we complain about the exact same thing if we choose the choices. Obviously, no one brings it up, but I find that funny. I thought the Protheans vanished fifty thousand years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Hmm. So everyone could benefit from this, but but shouldn't humans be the best? We need, we needed that information first, but I guess that's... Well, I guess we can't do anything about that. Why did we tell the council? Yeah, exactly. He's like, or we don't need your help. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. He wants to see me in action? This ain't some peep show voyeur, something you pay for on the internet. I don't like this. I should have known why. I, like hell he is. Since when do we answer to the Spectres? You're smart enough to know how things work, Commander. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. A grim business, but you got the job done. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Man, that Tor Torfon thing, and, and you put my name forward? But we, I don't even know you, dude. I guess I guess you're really your skills are, are your best way to get, get ahead. Exactly. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I guess I'm glad you, you care about the job, meritocracy and all that, but... Uh... What if I don't want to be a Spectre? What if I don't want all this power? I don't like people making decisions about my future. This isn't about you, Shepard. Humanity needs this. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Nihilus is joining us? More party members? Protheans? What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society. And without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Everyone get that? Yeah, the investigate here is just to, if you want to know more about this world outside of just reading the codex, you can ask him, even though your character should probably know a good deal of this already, but uh, anyway. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species and after this it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance hmm that could be good for us humans we want humans to be awesome now why is this beacon so important all advanced galactic civilization is based on prothean technology even yours if we hadn't discovered those prothean ruins buried on mars we'd still be stuck on earth that was just a small data cache who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. 
Well, raw hands, but isn't it a bad idea to base all of your technology on some ancient, like, ancient civilization? Like, I mean, I get that it's brought us out of Earth and into the space a galaxy or whatever, but isn't there, like, a bad thing about, like, strictly basing everything on something else, like not coming up with your own stuff just in case that technology maybe doesn't work as well as it should or whatever? Eh, it's probably not a big deal. It'll never come, it'll never come back to bite us in the, in later on, right? Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. Obviously, that's probably where we're at, right? The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Oh, right. The, sorry. Yeah, the Terminus systems are an area nearby. I, I, I was mixing up some stuff there, but yeah. You know, we don't want a political we don't want a political doghouse over here, so... Alright, I'm ready, ready to do this. Let's get some action. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! traffic at all it just goes dead there's nothing reverse and hold the 38.5 yeah. status report 17 minutes out captain no other alliance ships in the area take us in joker fast and quiet this mission just got a lot more complicated a small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention it's our best chance to secure the beacon Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. What? Isn't he supposed to, like, help us or work with us to, like test our skill and then he's running off on himself man what a what a badass trying to do all this stuff and be all cool man i can't wait to get him as a character uh can we trust him i don't like putting my life in the hands of a turian sir nihilus is on our side he wants you in the spectrums and he wants that beacon hmm. well understood captain ready and able sir the mission's yours now shepherd good luck we are approaching drop point two Saving or whatever, so and now we made it. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. And now we made it to the first combat simulation part of the game. What awaits us on Eden Prime? What was that? Man, this place got hit hard, Commander. Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard up. Dang it! You were <laughs> damn it, Nihilus! You ruined my outro. Ah, once again with flair. What awaits us on Eden Prime, the farm country here? What it was, that Cthulian spaceship-looking hand thing that popped up out of nowhere. And will Jenkins really uh, get the combat he so wished for? 
Find out next time in the next episode of Mass Effect. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.